So, okay, shalom everyone. So welcome, it's, uh, it's uh, officially Rosh Kodesh Shabbat. Shabbat. So um, wanted to uh, go over some uh, spiritual energy. Remember every day, every week, every month, and every year there's a, there's a special energy that is uh, brought down from, from heaven. And we're gonna talk about that uh, very quickly. So um, what's interesting is uh, the month of uh, Shabbat always fall on the Torah portion on relating to the Exodus. So we're going to, um, Jesse, I can't move forward. Why am I can't move forward? It's just lagging. Forget again. It's just lagging. Okay. So uh, so if you if you were able to uh, listen to the teaching on Bayera, um, let me, there you go. So uh, we said in the in the Torah portion, it said that God did not reveal to to Abraham. It says in verse two of Exodus six, God spoke to Moses and said unto him, "I am the Lord." So he, he used the the holy name of God, the Yod Hey uh, Vavke, the, the the unpronounceable holy name of God, and he said, "And I appeared unto Abraham and Isaac and Jacob as El Shaddai, or God Almighty." So so what what it's saying is. There are two dimensions of God's name. The, the, the common name that it's used is Elohim and the, the Yodke Babke. And um, why did God think that it is appropriate now to share his holy name, to reveal his name to the Jewish people? Well, we, we said in the in if you listen to the teaching of Bayera, it says here that. There are two dimensions in the name of God, the, the, the world of Elohim. It says here, this is the, wor the world of order. This is the world of law and absoluteness. Mm. Whereas the word of Hashem, the name of God, the, the name of the holy name of God it, is the name of the possibility or the miraculous. So let's try to understand this in terms of our personal redemption because the first thing that the person uh, to effect his redemption, the miracle, uh, the miracle in his life or her life, there is an action on our part. We need to, we need to. Number one, we need to, to understand that you know we don't, we don't, we cannot live this life anymore. You know, there, there's something. There has to be something there. Like the same way I'm going to, to uh, the same way when the children of Israel. When they when they were in Egypt, they you know they were they were under slavery and yet they were okay with it. They were not really complaining, but and they said you know there's there's a new pharaoh that will come in, and they were hoping that the change in leadership will alleviate their suffering. But it turns out that the change actually made it worse. So what happened is they started to cry out to God. So the first step in the redemption process is for us to realize that. There's a better way. There's a better way, right? So here we see here that um, they have to believe that there's a better way. So, the, so the second stage of the of the Exodus story is it is not enough for us to say that you know I don't I don't want it anymore. But you you need to believe in a God that will be able to deliver you. So so here it says here that they started to imagine a possibility. So the name Elohim is the is where we get the world of hierarchy, the world of, of order, the world of strict law. That's why God said the very first commandment of the Jewish people, he said, you know, I'm gonna take you out of the, the land of Egypt and this month shall mark for you the beginning of month. So God started to say, you, you are to sanctify the, new, the, the moon now. So, 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 so what's happening here, so, so, so what's happening here, is that God said, now you have to, so now I want to, to, get to, to look beyond the world of order, the world of law, the, the world of nature. And I want you to look at, don't concentrate on the moon. Remember in, in, in Ecclesiastes, it says, there's nothing new under the sun. In other words, uh, under, the, under the sun system, under the Elohim system, everything works by order. Everything works by by absolute truth, right? So the, the, the you know it's very predictable. It's very 
it's uh it's very hierarchical very hierarchy meaning you know there's a, there's there's an order but god said now I, i want you to go beyond the moon now beyond the sun and i want you to to look at the moon now you are now uh i'm going to reveal to you my, my name my name the the yod kevabe because it is the realm of the the the, the miraculous something beyond natural say <laughs> something beyond natural the power of hashem's name that is uh that is that conveys the miracle he said i never appeared to uh, as hashem or the the holy name of god but when you believe in the power of hashem which is the possibilities of miracle which is already uh, folded within creation then that created the break in the negative pattern so so we so 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 what i'm trying to convey here is that god is saying as believers in yeshua we we need to to look at god beyond the things that we are experiencing today so he said don't look at the things that that are physical because the things that are that are that are seen are temporary temporary and the things that are not seen are eternal so that's uh, that's the world of of hashem so god said we, we you know the the believers or the jewish people are associated with the moon why because the moon does to have its own light the moon just gets a reflection from god and that's what uh that's what we represent we just we we, we don't have a a light on our own our light comes from god so so the month of shabbat 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 is the 11th month it starts tonight sunset uh, january 2nd and interesting about this this word shabbat here in in in, uh, in the hebrew it is the same spelling as shabbat and also the word scepter so so what does that mean so what does that mean so the the, the understanding of this month is the month of joy and we're going to see the month of happiness why because it is uh, it is indicating of the, the 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 celebration of rest or shabbat and scepter of course is associated to the messiah so, the, so it it conveys a messianic kingdom so uh the tribe associated with this month is the tribe of asher so what's interesting about the tribe of asher there's not a lot of um stories about the tribe of asher unlike uh, simeon and levi and uh, judah and uh, and joseph and benjamin but the tribe of asher there's there's really not a lot of mention the tribe uh but the tribe is connected to happiness joy and abundance in fact they said we're going to we're going to see some of the prophecy by jacob he says the tribe of asher is um is especially um is especially uh choice by the tribes in fact the levites decide to marry the daughters of asher we're going to see why because asher is connected to let's look at the prophecy jacob in genesis 49:20 he says asher food is rich he will provide food fit for a king so the 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 idea of the tribe of asher is they will be a tribe that uh they 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 were they were they had the northern part of israel which was rich in fruit and olive trees so they they created the food fit for the king so so uh so again the the connotation of the tribe of asher is pleasure uh happiness and abundance and uh it says here that because of the the land where they were they, they, the the land was rich in olive oil in fact they produce the the olive oil that people all, all over the world came to buy the oil that asher's tribe produced so they became very very wealthy and as a result they they were tried known for for gratefulness for uh, thanksgiving to hashem why because they always had abundance so the children they said were very well brought up so 
Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 33, again, Moses, Moses um, also prophesied about the tribal Asher. It says in 33 verse, uh, I think in verse 24, it says, May Asher be the most blessed of sons. May he be a favorite among his brothers and bathe his feet in oil. May your bolts be iron and bronze and your strength last as long as you live. So here, the, 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 the allusion to the oil, oil is symbolic of wisdom. Oil is symbolic of, again, um, of abundance. So they said you will be, your feet will be bathed in oil, symbolic that there's gonna be so much oil that you're, you're even going to be stepping on it. So Moses took Jacob's blessing and, and, and I said step and, and uh, put it a step further talking about uh, the abundance of oil. And it says here that in the Talmud, it, it records aptly that these blessings were fulfilled. Asher's land was full of olives and the member of the tribe was able to provide an astonishing amount of oil to the world. So interesting that we are saying that the blessing of Hashem when we when we pray the blessing, you know, when we pray the blessing, it's interesting that Asher is mentioned there. Remember, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kidishanu. So, so the, the 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 name of Asher is mentioned every time we say a blessing. So, in Deuteronomy chapter one verse three, it says here on the first day of the eleventh month. So, this is the eleventh month. So, this is the first day of the forty-eighth year. Moses. Moshe spoke to the people of Israel, reviewing everything that Adonai already put out. So, so what it, that implies is the, this month, there is a special uh, blessing that it's almost like a second. Remember, the book of Deuteronomy is considered the, the second book or the second Torah, or in, 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 uh, in Jewish language, it says it is the review of the Torah. So what does that mean? It means that when Moses was, was, before Moses died, this is on the 11th month, in the month of Shabbat, he was actually declaring. It, they said that the, the energy of this month is like as if God uh, gave the Torah for the first time in Mount Sinai. So the, so the blessing of Pentecost is, uh, is very powerful in this month, the release of the force. Remember, when God created the world, they said in the book of formation, um, uh, this is the this is a, a book written by uh, Rabbi Akiva ben Joseph, and it is said that Moses was the one who 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 uh, who teach who taught them the this uh, this, and it was just only written by this person. So we learned that it says that there are twenty two energy forces or frequency in when God created the universe. This 22 frequency actually pertains to the 22 Hebrew letters. So you think about it, when God created the world, what did he do? He just spoke the word, right? So, the, the, so there's an energy being released each time. When, the, when God was creating the world, he was speaking the word and, 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 and out of those frequency, actually those 22 forces and the com combination of those forces created the world the world that we have today. So each of the each of these frequ frequency represented by one letter uh, that can help us, and we tap in. So this month, um, that the Hebrew letter associated for this month is the letter Bet and the letter Sade. And we're gonna go back to that. But what's interesting when when Moses was 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 re was reviewing the the Torah to the people, there were 70 people who were translating it into the 70 language. Remember, there was a mixed multitude that went with the children of Israel. So Moses' sermon was translated in 70 language. Why? Because God wanted the nations to know the Torah. God wanted the nations to, to understand, um, everybody to understand the Torah, the Jewish. Why? Because the Torah is Hashem. So going back to the two letters, Bet represents the very first word in, 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 the, in the Bible is Bereshit, meaning in the beginning, and, and the word there is the letter Bet. Bet represents creation or house, 
the creation of the of the house of God. So, so think about it. Why did God create? the universe. Why did God create the heavens in there? Why? Because he wanted to create a home, not only in the spiritual realm, but he wanted to create a home in the physical world. And that's why he created the world today, because why? He wanted his holiness to, to, to permeate the physical world as well. And of course, the letter Sade, which, uh, which uh, is associated with, with righteousness, and it's saying that this two energy, the, 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 the power of creation and the power of holiness, righteousness to flow in this month. So um, again, also because it's attributed to the, the tribe of Asher, which means uh, associated with oil. Oil means wisdom. So they said that this month, there's a tremendous, tremendous uh, blessing in understanding the word of God. So God is saying this, this month is especially important for the revelation of secrets. So if you're wanting to know um, things from the Lord, it is, this is the month wherein we pray for God's wisdom to come down and to give us understanding. So, so like I said, uh, Jacob's blessing to Asher was connected to food, good food. People enjoy food. Um, for many reasons and, 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 and for, for positive and, and negative reasons. For negative reasons, if people are depressed, what do they do? They start eating. Why? Because they think that the eating will give them momentary uh, pleasure. But of course, the, of course, the sense of this month is also the sense of eating. And Proverbs tells us in Proverbs chapter 13, the righteous person eats, eats his fill, but the belly of the wicked is empty. Proverbs 23 says here, when you sit down to dine with a ruler, think carefully about who is before you. If you have a big appetite, put a knife on your throat. Don't get greedy of his delicacies, but they are deceptive food. So, so again, so uh, food, is associated with discipline, with control. When you are eating, eating, when you have a, a hooray of, of, of food in front of you, it is not for you to eat all of them, but for you to control and, and eat wisely, amen? So, so it's, it's, it's also telling us that this is the month where we should control, discipline and control. Um, and, uh, the, this is also the month uh, of the constellation Aquarius. In Hebrew, the word Aquarius is the word Delhi, which literally means buckets. Why? What is a bucket? A bucket is, is, an, is an instrument where we use where we draw water, right? We draw water. So, so aqua, aqua in, uh, in Latin or in Spanish, it means water. So it's, it's, it, the month is associated with oil, wisdom, and associated with water. Remember, oil and water don't, do, do not what? They do not mix. Oil and water do not mix. So, so there's, a, there's, a, there's a play here. So what, what God is saying, this, this month is the month where God will, water is always associated with God's blessing. And as believers in Yeshua, we are called to be servants. So the bucket is, is the means for us to, 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 to draw water from, the, from where? Where do we use the bucket? Can you imagine if you had a well, you don't have a bucket? How can you draw the water? So you need the bucket to draw the water from the well. So where is the well? The well is the wellspring of the wisdom of God. And as believers, we are supposed to be the bucket bucket carrier and we are to spread the blessing to the world that's why the wisdom that we get what do we need to do with it do we you know um that's why you know this 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 month is associated with with knowledge and wisdom and what god is saying we are to take this knowledge and wisdom and we are to scatter it to the world and that's the role that's our role our role is to to draw or glean from from the energy that God is pouring out, he's pouring the, the energy of, 
of wisdom. This is the, the, the month where, where, where wisdom will be flown and we are to, to receive it like buckets and we are to spread it to, to the world around us. And, um, and another insight to this month is in the 15th of Shabbat is, they call it the holiday of the trees, the holiday of the trees. Why is that important? To, we, we honor the trees. In Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 19, it says, when, you, when we go into war, if you find a fruit tree, you are not supposed to cut it. It's only those non-bearing tree, fruit-bearing tree, is that you are, that's the only tree you're allowed to cut. And you can use that as weapon or you can use that as barriers. But, you, but when, you, when you come across a fruit tree in Deuteronomy chapter 20, he said, you're not allowed to cut it. Why? Why? Because the, the, the tree is really um, associated with, is, uh, is, is, uh, is also associated with human beings. We are like trees. Why? Because trees grow. And you notice that the tree, when, when, they, when, when they're growing, their hand, the, the branches are, are, are in heaven, are raising up in heaven to receive the blessing. And then, but their roots are where? Their, their roots are in the ground. So what God is saying that we, as human beings, we're like, we're like trees. We, we grow, we, we bear fruit, but we can only bear fruit if, if our branches are reaching up to heaven. When our branches are, are not reaching up to heaven, we will not bear fruit. And God said, if you're not bearing fruit, you are allowed to be cut off. That's what Yeshua said, right? He said, you know, um, you know, he, he went to a fig tree and this fig tree did not bear any fruit. He said, curse be this fig tree. And the, and the fig tree was cursed. Why? Because it was not bearing fruit. So, so the, the tree, uh, the holiday of the tree, it's associated with us. We are uh, it, it, on the 15th of Shabbat, we are encouraged. We are encouraged to eat a lot of fruit, fruit, uh, fruits. That's it. Eat a lot of fruits. Um, as a, it's, 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 it's not a, it's, it's, it's just really a tradition that we eat fruits on that day because we are celebrating the holiday of the trees. Amen. So uh, let me see what else do I have here. So, so let's say trees are compared to humans uh, because we have the power to grow and we have the power to bear fruit. So may this month be a fruitful month for us for not only for the download of God's wisdom. Remember, we, are, we should be ready as buckets. We should be ready because this month will God's blessing and God's righteousness will flow in our lives and we are reminded that Asher is the tribe of abundance of joy so we are to to uh to uh to live in joy and abundance today amen amen so with that i'm going to uh stop the recording uh, let's see we're done